House. Members, the next uh, call was a split call. Michael Wood, five minutes. Mr Speaker, uh, thank you. I'm very pleased also to rise to speak uh, in favour of this third reading of the Land Transfer Bill. Um, it's a bill which modernises what is a very significant piece of legislation. Reading through the notes, we know that the piece of legislation that, we are, that is immediately being superseded is the Land Transfer Act 1952, that its predecessor legislation um, um, was set up in 1885. So we have considerable periods of time, about 60 or 70 years it would seem, uh, between revisions of this piece of legislation. And um, no, I won't comment on whether certain members of this House may or may not have been present at the time of those various pieces of legislation. Um, I do have to comment, Mr. Um, Mr Speaker. I was somewhat amused when Mr Ducey um, reflected on the government's relentless modernising drive in respect to this bill. But, of course, the Honourable Ruth Dyson um, did um, note in her previous comments that it's taken the government seven years um, from the beginning of this piece of legislation, from the, the initial report that we received from the Law Commission to actually progress the legislation through the House. So if that's a relentless modernising drive, I, I'd hate to see what slow and steady progress was. Mr Speaker, it is a bill that the Labor Party Party supports, and it's a bill that's important really uh, to our whole economic system, to our whole society, because it underpins uh, the way in which, as the title rather suggests, um, we transfer and understand the transfer of land to operate. And the number of um, principles which underpin that, which are modernised and updated uh, within this bill. Um, the fundamental principle which the Bill affirms, and this is in the very purpose of the Bill and is reflected particularly through the first two parts of the Bill, is the torrent system. And the torrent system, as we um, discussed at great length in committee stage, actually, what was a very good interchange between members of the House and Mr Finlayson and the Chair, um, is a system which evolved in South Australia in the 19th century and has spread around a number of Commonwealth jurisdictions, in which we have... Um, absolute confidence in a public central register of land holdings. And that's incredibly important because in our system, you want to know that if you own a bit of land, it's understood that you own it. You want to know that if you're buying or selling a piece of land, that you know who you're buying or you're selling it from. Those things are utterly crucial uh, to the operation of our economy and society. And so we affirm that uh, within this piece of legislation, sir, but we update important aspects of it. I was thinking in preparing for my comments tonight about the way only 10 or 15 years ago in um, a job that I had which interacted significantly with the financial sector, we still did a lot of our communication through faxes. We still faxed a lot of information. In fact, in, in many respects, it was the main way that we communicated across our organisation. Um, but, of course, that's been largely outmoded now. It was still a paper-based system. That was not all that long ago. It was not all that long ago. And what we know is that across most of the areas of our economic life now, what we actually rely upon is electronic communication. And so one of the key things that the Land Transfer Bill does is, is just recognise that, is recognise the reality of the way in which we conduct these kinds of transactions. One of the useful things that the Land Transfer Bill does in respect of this is um, not just bring us up to date with where we're at now in 2017, but actually we build into this bill in the latter part some capacity uh, through the use of regulation um, for the bill to be adapted to forms of communication which may evolve in the years to come. But quite appropriately, uh, what we've also done in the legislation, and I approve of this wearing my uh, regulations review committee hat, as we said, there's a, a, a five-year check-in on that. So in five years we come back, and if via regulation we have determined that alternative methods of electronic communication are appropriate in respect of land transfer, then let's actually either build that into the Act or let's have a fundamental look at it. Let's not just leave it hanging out there in regulation land. Let's actually make sure that the Act um, stays live and stays up to date as best we can. Um, one of the really important areas that we, um, covered, that we cover in this piece of legislation um, is the area of indefeasibility. And that, of course, is incredibly important. That, that underpins the torrent system. It says that if something is here in, um, in our land transfer system, that's it. You can take it for the bank, uh, to the bank. Um, there's no backing down from that. But one little area in which we have addressed, uh, we have looked at in the land transfer bill, which has been a, was a bit of a tricky area to work through at committee stage and also at select committee, was the question of manifest injustice. What actually happens, sir, in situations um, uh, where, there, where something arises 
and we can see that through possibly the pernicious actions of one party, something has made its way into, into the land transfer system, and that might be manifestly unjust. Someone may have been dishonest, there may have been some kind of error in the system. And so we have a record in the land transfer system, which under the principles of the torrent system and indefeasibility, we would otherwise say, well, we just accept that. That's the way it is. You can't change it. What we've actually built into the Land Transfer Act is this concept of manifest injustice. And it's about recognising that the courts have some capacity, um, through, through the High Court only, uh, through the High Court, to recognise a manifest injustice where that might occur and to do something to put that to rights. Now, Mr O'Rourke, in his comments, um, spoke about the debate that we had about this um, at um, both second reading and committee stage, and the Labour Party did support the supplementary order paper Mr O'Rourke put forward in this area, which did not make its way through um, into this um, bar three version of the, of the bill. But I do just want to comment on that briefly and, and affirm that the Labour Party did think that was a little bit unfortunate, because in this area of manifest injustice, we've set a very, very high threshold, an extremely high threshold, and the, um, the things that need to be met are listed in the Act and left to the discretion of the High Court. And the point that Mr O'Rourke made that the Labour Party agrees with is that if you have met that threshold, if there is a manifest injustice and something is incorrectly entered into the land transfer system, then why would the remedy simply not be to put that right? Instead, what we have built into this Act um, is a system whereby compensation is considered first. Um, and uh, we in the Labour Party just didn't think that was quite the right approach. We would have um, preferred the system put forward in Mr O'Rourke's supplementary order paper where we say we simply put it right. We remedy what went wrong. We remedy the original manifest uh, injustice. Um, what I would say around the question of manifest injustice, sir, also is that in consideration of this bill, there were submissions and there was discussion about whether a definition of that should be entered into the Act or whether we should leave that for the court to determine um, through its processes. I'm sorry to interrupt the honourable member. The time has come for me to leave the chair for the dinner break. Members, this debate is interrupted and I shall resume the chair at 7.30.